about D-Wave that made you want to take this company public via SPAC? I mean, $300 million, that's a big boost. <laughs> yeah, well, what I liked about D-Wave is that they actually have products in market today. So this is not a, hey, we'll have a product five years from now, uh, and it's an R&D company and invest in it. It actually has products today. It's serving clients like Volkswagen, Savon Foods, has 12 big Fortune 1000 clients. So quantum computing is here today for D-Wave, and that's why I like it. Still, D-Wave is considered kind of an underdog in the quantum computing field when you look at folks like Google like Rigetti Computing, what is their special sauce you see when it comes to their technological approach that, that makes them a good bet in your view? Yeah, there's a few things. So number one, because they've been around for a while, a while their IP portfolio is enormous. That means patents and sort of the, the what they've built so far is a huge treasure trove and value creating um, set of IP. Second, their approach is the only approach that works for optimization problems, like employee scheduling, or imagine how a complex business um, schedules employees with their days off and hours work and so on. Uh, they can solve real world optimization problems today, given their approach, and they're gonna build a new approach too, like Rigetti and like Google as well. The approach they're using, as I understand it, is called annealing. You know, explain to us what makes that special and different from you know, the approach some of these other competitors, quite frankly, are taking. Yeah, so the annealing approach is an approach that uh, I believe, and we think technologically, uh, we believe, can solve a certain set of problems that the other approaches cannot solve. It doesn't mean that annealing can solve every problem that quantum might solve, but it can, only, it can solve about $100 billion worth of total addressable market problems, and no one else has, has that approach. So that's what makes it unique. The other thing I'd add is that D-Wave has a brand new leadership team. Alan Barrett's is an incredible leader. He's very commercial and technically deep. So it's got a fresh look at the world. It's got real big customers today. And it's got an approach that they're, they have a unique kind of lock on at the moment. Now, I got to ask you, Lyft earnings just out, beat on revenue, miss on riders. We're waiting for Uber earnings later this week. When you look at it, what is the future of ride hailing? Does it recover? Does it get back to pre-pandemic levels? I think, I think it does. I think you'll see revenue from both Uber and Lyft on the ride side exceed pre-pandemic levels in Q4. Uh, and I think Lyft just proved that from a revenue standpoint, not necessarily from a rider standpoint. And that's because prices went up, right? Um, I think you'll both see prices moderate in 2022, riders come back, and you'll see this business growing again. I mean, no one who lives in a city can actually live without one of these services anymore. So it's just that people have been home and haven't been going to work. So as that moderates back, I think you'll see recovery in, in the rides business for both companies. And look, last time he was on the show, Dara Khosra Shahi, the CEO of Uber, predicted that rides would surpass pre-pandemic levels once again. That said, you know, you've made it no secret that you, A, you're still a, a shareholder in Uber. You are not happy with the way things are going. You are not happy with the way the stock has languished. What are you looking for there? Is it, is it a strategy change? Um, I mean, I, frankly, I think they need to have a, a management change, like some uh, leadership uh, wake up call. I mean, the stock now is where it was in 2015. That's seven years ago. Um, and so the, the businesses have been growing, but Wall Street is not rewarding them for it. And there's a reason. I think they lack confidence that this management team is going to innovate and is going to find cost savings to make it more profitable sooner. Um, and they've done a bunch of bad acquisitions that haven't helped. Uh, a management change like a new CEO, like a, like a Peloton style management change? Uh, How extreme I mean, are we talking here? <laughs> well, I mean, Dara's five years is you know, first five years is up this summer, and I think it'll be a point for the board and for shareholders to look up and say, well, this company went public at $45 a share. Where is it today? What are the goals? Have we hit them? And is, you know, it, whether it's him or the team, is this team collectively the right team to take it forward and to regain momentum? I mean, seven years is a long time to wait for the stock to, to get back to even. What about the promise of Eats and the 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 ambitious moves that Uber and Dara have made there, quickly. I mean, I think I think Eats is a great business. Thank God we started it way back when, and because you see what happens to Lyft when you're relying on one business. 
So I think Eaton City is a crown jewel. Now, I wish they hadn't lost the lead in market share to DoorDash, but there's a lot of room to run on Eats worldwide in a lot of different areas. And you see what GoPuff's doing. There's lots of angles you can take that business. So I like that business, and I hope they you know, regain the market share they've lost in the last couple of years.